So the final module is uh, overdose prevention tips. Uh, the biggest one is look in your medicine cabinet and make sure that you don't have pain pills that you didn't take still in there because anybody can go into your bathroom. Uh, I have a, a, a former patient who was in home repair uh, who became addicted to painkillers and he said first thing he did when he went to give an estimate was can I go to your bathroom and he would immediately open up the medicine cabinet see if there were pain pills and take the pain pills uh, so children would be at risk if they get curious adolescents who may be completely inexperienced with taking a pain pill you know would be at risk the smaller the body the higher the dosage uh, so you don't want to have an overdose occur because medicines were not secured. If you're not going to use the pain medicines, you know, take them to your pharmacy for disposal. You don't want to flush them down the toilet. You don't want to put them in the trash because then they're still available to the public. Uh, so if they're expired, take them to your pharmacy, ask them to dispose of it. Uh, you don't share your prescriptions with others because you just never know about the level of use or experience with that. Some individuals may be much more sensitive to a certain dose of a pain medicine than you are or you think most people are. And so that varies a lot from adult to adult to adult. So even an 80 milligram Oxycontin may be way too much for one individual, particularly if you're sharing it and you say, here, crush this up and try it. If that's the first time they do it, it may be way too high a dosage that goes in suddenly, and then it's short acting, not long acting as it was intended to be. Uh, if you have breathing problems, you already have you know, some problem with asthma or chronic obstructive pulmonary disease or a lung infection, uh, then you really need to tell your doctor. If you have sleep apnea, and you stop breathing at night because you get obstruction. Your doctor needs to know this before prescribing an opioid because you know, if you're taking it around the clock for pain control, it could reduce your level of breathing a bit, but in somebody that already has lung problems, that could be too much. And then you don't mix pain medicines with the other risky substances that we've talked about that are often you know, in combination in an overdose scenario including the older muscle relaxants. Most people have heard of Flexeril or Soma. They're old medicines. They're also 50 years old, but they're still around. Uh, they act in the center of the brain, not out at the level of the muscle to bring about relaxation, but they're sedatives. Uh, even antihistamines, Benadryl, which you might take for itching, but some people take it for sleep you know, that reduces level of consciousness. So there are any number of over-the-counter and prescribed medicines that you wouldn't want to mix with your pain medicines. So if you use illegal opioids, if you're buying pain pills or getting extra pain pills or you use heroin, don't do it by yourself. You know, get help, but don't use alone because then there's no one there to discover that you've lapsed into an unconscious state and your breathing you know, has shut down. Uh, make a prevention plan for overdose. You know, make sure you're aware that there is a risk of overdose. And if this happens to me, this is what I'm going to do or what I'm going to have my friends do uh, and inform them about that. Discuss it with your peer group you know, so that you protect one another. Uh, if you haven't used pain pills or heroin in a while, then your tolerance may fade, and then the same dosage you were using when you last used as little as a week ago or two weeks ago could be way too much. You know, this is a common scenario where somebody might go into a hospital or a detention facility. They've not used for a week or 10 days or two weeks. They come out they go back to using, but the dosage is too high because the tolerance has reversed itself. Uh, keep naloxone on hand. That should be part of a good prevention plan. 
you know, reach out, ask for help within family and friends, reach out to treatment professionals or to your family physician. Uh, if you go on the internet and you do a search for uh, addiction treatment, Maryland, there are a number of websites that will pop up and you can get a list by city of every level of care right in your zip code. And many of these websites are very complete in terms of the number of providers that are available. If you're in crisis, call the Maryland hotline, the 800 number that's on the slide. Uh, if you don't know that number, then call 911. Let somebody know that you're in need of help. So Maryland created this naloxone administration program in 2013. It's part of the state's opioid uh, response program. There are many strategies, not just this strategy. Uh, if you want to read more about that, the website down at the bottom is a place you can go to read about the statewide strategy. It's a very serious health issue in our state and in your community. Uh, it's worth learning more about it. And if there's someone at risk that you know of who's had an overdose or you think could have an overdose, consider getting a certificate. Uh, thanks for watching today. And if you have questions, call your local health department.